Hello everyone, Frost here. Welcome back to a new classic WoW video. This is a continuation from the rare and expensive vanilla items that we made back in September. That video received very good feedback, getting close to 100k views and having one of the best audience retention, which led me to believe that you guys really enjoy this type of content. Like we said, vanilla is abundant in rare treasures and today we're going to discuss 8 more of them, explaining how to obtain and why they worth so much. This should serve as a piece of information, a little bit of knowledge to carry with you in the upcoming classic release. Because it would be a shame to find yourself in a position owning one of these items and not knowing the true value of it. Knowledge is power and power is to be wielded wisely. Without further ado, let's explore. The first item in our list is kind of odd, a hand, the hand of Edward the Odd. This is a direct reference to the early World of Warcraft developer Eric Dodds, although he might be known for being the lead designer for Hearthstone. This developer worked on almost every game Blizzard had to offer, from Starcraft to Diablo, in rather really important positions. Until that bright moment when he joined the newly formed World of Warcraft team where he spent 8 years serving as a system designer. One of the roles he had for World of Warcraft was to design the professions for players, including engineering. Dodds was responsible for the Gnomish Mind Control Cap, Explosive Ship, Discombobulator Ray, Ultra Safe Transporters, and all the ridiculous Gnomish and Goblin inventions. He was then moved from World of Warcraft shortly after Wrath of the Lich King expansion arrived, to Diablo 3, and ultimately wasting his creative talent on a card game, Hearthstone. If this man had slightly more influence in the team, the first expansion of World of Warcraft would have been called Goblin vs Gnomes, as he was often stating and being excited about it. Edward the Odd, the unseen character created by Eric, it's more of a shadow of his personality, known as a very eccentric human paladin where the Odd stems from his abnormal sense of fashion. Although Edward looks strange, he's not a pushover apparently and is referred as the Empowered. If you pay close attention to the name of the character, he had the inspiration for intentionally mismatching Edward the Odd, where if you take out some letters it gets very close to Eric Dodds. Hence, the item Hand of Edward the Odd we're covering today is made by the hands of Eric Dodds. Pretty creative, and I believe now we get a good understanding why the game launched 15 years ago it's still beautiful today. Enough about the history and background surrounding this item, let's move to the technical part. The Mace is level 57 epic BOE world drop, which means it's part of the last wave of epic items, making it very rare as it drops mostly from mobs with levels between 59 and 62, most common in Schoolomans, Stratholme and high end raids. 45 damage per second on a 1.6 speed makes this mace desired mostly for its proc, chance on hit to make the next spell cast within 4 seconds to cast instantly. An item desired by paladins and shamans, where a paladin tank for example could drop its weapon speed with seal of crusader to about 1.2, yielding on average more procs, very useful for dropping instant high heals. Or imagine a shaman in pvp dropping some crazy combos with instant chain lightnings. Not only this, but the proc can be used to instant mount up, instantly cap the AB flag, which can be pretty OP, especially in pre-made versus pre-made. Capping that blacksmith flag on a proc, leaving the opposing team mind boggled and probably you and your whole team reported to the GMs. Another fun fact, you could instantly hearthstone when the proc is up, which is a bit ironic, don't you think? Similar how Eric Dodds got instantly ported from World of Warcraft to Hearthstone. Lots of foreshadowing in Vanilla WoW. The price for Hand of Edward the Odd can go anywhere from 600 to 1200 gold, but after some forum archive digging I found out that on some servers, back in Vanilla, the mace sold with prices from 1500 to 2000 gold. Not sure what the value of it will be in Classic, but due to its rarity and unique gameplay style it offers, I'm assuming it's going to be high. Let's move to the next item, as I had in mind to keep this video short. Alcor's Sunraiser 
an item that seems to belong to an NPC that does not belong to Vanilla WoW. Alcor is a level 60 Blood Elf Rogue training with Instructor Cell and other trainees in the murder row of Silvermoon City. Instructor Cell appears to be wearing a tier 2 Bloodfang set, which makes me think that part of their training happened in Eastern Kingdoms. Sneaky, passing from the Burning Crusade through the portal in Eastern Plaguelands. In one of the journeys, Alcor lost his Sunraiser dagger and remained forever in the history of Classic WoW. A level 58 BOE dagger with 45.4 damage per second and a chance on hit to blast the target for 75 to 106 damage. But this is not why this item was expensive back in vanilla, and will be probably expensive in Classic WoW. The reason why this rare piece of item is expensive is because of the 1.3 speed. Being a fast weapon, it could do wonders for assassination rogues with applying poisons. But still, the rogues that desire this dagger are still a minority, and most of them wouldn't even pay the price for it. So, the winners are the tanks. Warrior tanks, because a big chunk of the tanking community consider this tanking one of the top threat per second weapons up to Naxxramas. The theory behind this is that in 40 man raiding, you will be rage capped most of the time, meaning you can always have heroic strike queued up. Heroic Strike, as you may know, converts your white hit into a yellow hit, thus pushing glancing blows off the hit table. And by extension, you won't reap any benefit from the extra weapon skill your race provides. Alcors, despite its low DPS, would still land in the top 3 threat per second weapons in the game that includes AQ and Nax daggers as well. It isn't the damage of Heroic Strike that is driving the threat per second factor. It's the ability to produce as many heroic strikes as possible in a given time frame. For the same reason, even Finkel Skinner will outperform most of the AQ and Nax weapons for pure threat per second. Keep in mind that this heroic spam is only in raid situations, and even then not in all fights. They also have an argument that this might be better for 5 mans, same theory, the faster the better, but not necessarily for heroic strike. You need to get an auto attack off ASAP and get your first Sunder armor. If you have a 2.5 speed weapon for example, and you get dodged, blocked or missed, it will be 5 seconds before a second attempt to hit, thus losing aggro and being perceived as a bad tank. Now, you might not agree with these theories and some of them might not even be right. As vanilla tanking, it's still theory crafted after 15 years. But the point is that this dagger will be highly desired and the price of it can go anywhere from 800 to 1300 gold, depending on how many hardcore dedicated tanks your server has. It drops with a very low chance from high level mobs, 59 to 62, most commonly in Skulomans, Strathholm and Blackrock Mountain raids. Probably the same areas where Alcor used to travel in his journey of becoming a better rogue. Eye of Shadow One of the parts required for the legendary priest quest Balance of Light and Shadow. A quest that in the end rewarded Benediction slash Anathema. Obtaining the Eye of Shadow was not easy because it dropped from Lord Kazak, the world boss from Blasted Lands. Although it was a quest item, your guild or raid in this situation had to tag the boss in order for you to get a chance at looting this item. Jeff Kaplan, the lead game designer at that time, wanted to implement a plan to change this, so you can loot the eye even if you're not in the raid group. After carefully giving thoughts about this, they knew it was a mistake to implement the impending change. They've made an update, the devs are looking into alternate methods for the priest to get the drops required for the epic quest. When patch 1.5 came, the Eye of Shadow had a 100% drop chance from Kazakh, and it was also added to the loot table of the Winter Spring Demons, Hydarin Slayer and Hydarin Initiate with about 1% drop chance. This opened new ways of gold farming and people started farming for the eye. Still rare, but the lucky ones who obtained it consistently were able to sell it on the auction house for around 150 to 300 gold, depending on each server and depending on how many priests got their Eye of Divinity at the same time. Nevertheless, this remains one iconic rare item from Vanilla WoW, 
currently missing from retail, but we will see it again in Classic WoW. Mature Blue Dragon Sinew, which is a tendon of a dragon kin from the Blue Dragon Flight. A rare item sought after by hunters in order to obtain the ancient sinew wrapped lamina. An 18 slot epic quiver, part of the Hunter Leaf quest. Just like we said on the Eye of Divinity, this item also dropped from one world boss, this time was a Zurgos in a Jara, with about 60% drop chance. If you weren't in a guild that consistently killed world bosses, your odds as a hunter to obtain this quiver were slim to none. Even if you were in one of these elitist guilds, I remember that some of them choose to sell the blue sinew on the auction house for thousands of golds, thus using that gold for guild progression. I mean, the quiver didn't give anything special other than two extra slots capable of carrying 400 more arrows and of course the epic color. A 16 slot would have done the same job. When patch 1.5 came, the sinew dropped with 100% from Azurgos and it was also added to the loot table of the elite blue dragon kings in winter spring, just like they did with the Eye of Shadow. Unfortunately, while the Eye of Shadow had around close to 1% drop chance, the blue dragon sinew was more of a 0.1%, making it significantly more rare, thus more expensive for hunters. The estimated price for this item was anywhere between 500 gold and 1500 gold, making some hunters drop all their budget for a quest item. Spell Shock Leggings This might come as a shock, but this is one of the most rare items in game. In our previous video we said that Tibu Blazing Longsword holds that position. This pants is one of the 10 BOE rares that drop in Zulfarak. This dungeon, compared to other dungeons, like uh, Scarlet Monastery, tends to drop rare BOEs significantly less than other dungeons. In order for a level 45 item to drop from a mob, the mob has to be 3 to 4 levels above the required level of the item. The only mobs in Zulfarak with the required level to drop these pants seem to be the bosses, which means that only a handful of mobs in Zulfarak will have a 0.0 something chance to drop the pants making them one of the most rare items in game. Now, I'm not sure about the price on this item, but considering that they had the best in slot pants for the level 49 twink bracket, I assume it could be anywhere from 300 to 500 gold maybe. I don't know about you, but I don't remember seeing these pants on the auction house ever. Foror's Compedium of Dragon Slaying this item's name is a reference to Alex Afrasiabi, aka Forer, Blizzard quest designer in Vanilla WoW and lead quest designer in Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. Alex started as a hardcore gamer playing EverQuest 1, being the first rogue to reach level 50. Back then he was known as Forer, the guy who complained on forums that the game mechanics are not on point and most people knew him for his ideas on how the game should work from player to game developer. It wasn't long until Blizzard hired him and then Jeff Kaplan, who was also a hardcore EverQuest gamer, maybe they came as a package. Kaplan obtained the lead game designer position and together they played a big part on what Classic WoW became today. I remember a slogan from a company that works better here. Made by gamers for gamers. Early on, Blizzard really knew what they were doing, something that seems to be forgotten today. Speaking of forers, it can be obtained from a dusty tome, the random spawn in Dire Maul. They have a roughly 80% chance to contain a, a copy of Nat Pagel Extreme Angling, a 20% chance to contain a class quest book, and a 0.1% chance to contain forers Compedion of Dragon Slaying. When a player got Forer's Compendium of Dragon Slaying, they started the quest by handling the book to the Lord Keeper in the library of Dire Maul. He gave the player an item, Unfired Ancient Blade. The quest required the player to take this blade to Onyxia's lair and place it on the ground where it needs to be hit by one of the Onyxia's AoE fire breaths. Once hit, the blade would have turned into a heated ancient blade, which the player then could pick up and use it to stab Onyxia's dead body once they had slain her. 
This would transform the sword again, giving them a treated ancient blade. They would then proceed to the Armo library once more and hand in the quest. The reward was Quelserar, the High Blade, twin to Quelderar, the other Dragonforge blade. The fun part was that Foro was bind when used, so that left room for people farming it. Although many were unsuccessful, the lucky ones were richly rewarded. Warriors and paladins were ready to drop 400 to 900 gold to get their hands on Forers. Gosh, if I close my eyes, I can see all the classic warriors wearing might shoulders, Helm of Rat, a Draconian Deflector, and of course, Quelserar. Conjure Food Stratholm is filled with riches, especially the Scarlet side. You can obtain here a variety of expensive goods, such as Schematic Shadow Reflector, Recipe Flask of Distilled Wisdom, Pattern True Fate Vestments, and many more. But deep in this strong bastion of the Scarlet Crusade lies Archivist Galford, and he drops one of the items that you don't expect to be valuable. The Tome of Conjure Food, rank 7. The last rank of the Mage Refreshments. The secret of the delicious cinnamon rolls. The Tome is really important for mages early game, as the cinnamon rolls will restore around a thousand more HP over 30 seconds compared to the previous rank. The drop chance seems to be around 14%, and since the quality of this item is white, in case it drops it will go to whoever is in line to loot the corpse. Normally, if you have a mage in your group and he needs it, the tome should go to him. If not, congrats to who will win it because the book sells for about 500 gold early on. I feel a bit bad for all the mages buying this book for a fortune, because if you're the only mage having it in a guild, I bet you'll have lots of fun making food for a 40-man raid. Formula Enchant Weapon Spell Power Why would the Bind on Pickup formula be on this list? I guess we cannot stress enough the value of this enchanting recipe. It drops from 7 out of 9 bosses in Molten Core with about 0.2% chance. The rarity is there. Though, the value does not come from selling it on the auction house, but from the enchanting fees. Having this formula will also make you popular on the server, and the fees you're going to ask for are up to you. But don't be a douchebag and ask for too much, because people will know you as the greedy goblin. I'd say 20 to 50 gold per enchant should be a decent price. Back in vanilla, not everyone used to have their gear enchanted in raids and general gameplay, but I have a feeling that in Classic everyone will deck up. The amount of information that is out there after 15 years of a game being released will definitely help players choose the best for their class, and if you own some of the rare recipes like Lionheart Helmet, Core Armor Kit, Rare Enchants and many others, your life will become easier. Anyways, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Until next time, stay frosty.